The Durban 2 conference against racism kicked off in Geneva. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad was the only head of state to attend the event. Just like in 2001, the noble cause of human rights, the noble cause of anti-racism are being hijacked by a radical political agenda. I will now ask the Secretariat to escort His Excellency the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran to the podium. The Racism Conference, the UN Human Rights Council, is convened today as a sham. Some of the worst human rights offenders in the world have created this conference. We knew exactly what was about to happen, and we knew it had to be met with a firm and rapid response. So a day before that, Welcome to the Geneva Summit for Human Rights, Intolerance and Democracy. My name is Nazanin Afshin Jam. I'm going to be acting as the chair for today's conference. I was born in Iran in 1979 at the start of the revolution. My father was imprisoned, tortured and almost executed by the Revolutionary Guard simply for allowing alcohol, music and dancing at the hotel he managed. I'm a human rights activist, co-founder of Stop Child Executions Organization and founding member of the Iranian Justice Collective. One day before the UN Durban Review Conference, the eyes of the world look on Geneva. I call on the countries that believe in freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law and the declaration of human rights to stand in solidarity with the people of Iran and walk out tomorrow from the Durban Review Conference when Mr. Ahmadinejad makes his address. Following the World War II, they resorted to military aggressions to make an entire nation homeless under pretext of Jewish sufferings. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The press across the world splashed with this mass walkout from the UN Anti-Racism Conference in Geneva following President Ahmadinejad's speech. That week, we held a series of events to reclaim the language of human rights. Discussions by about 30 NGOs at the Geneva Summit on Human Rights were broadcast live. To allow such a bigot who represents a regime of intolerance to spew hate sentiments is a real shame. Ahmadinejad does not represent the people of Iran. The people of Iran and all those living under authoritarian rule deserve the right to establish their future under a democratic system. I still believe and know we will make that happen. Good evening. C'est un grand plaisir de vous voir, mon ami Hillel Neuer et la famille Mahfar. C'est un grand honneur. I remember well the scenes from that day because I came face to face with Ahmadinejad in the halls of the United Nations. Evidently, I broke UN protocol when I shouted wholeheartedly at him and his entourage of goons. Why are you executing children? It was a rare moment to be able to look into the eyes of somebody that has caused so much bloodshed and brutality. He gave me a smug smile and nothing more. I was at the UN, thanks to UN Watch, who had given me a platform to speak about the egregious human rights abuses in Iran since the Islamic Revolution 44 years ago. 
At the Human Rights Council, Ahmad Batibi and I had presented a petition of over 50 Iranian human rights activists calling for an immediate special session on Iran to investigate their crimes against humanity. Last year, 13 years later, the UN finally granted this special session. The Woman Life Freedom Revolution forced the UN to act. Iranians had made it known the world over that this regime is not reformable, and they paid a very heavy price with their lives for the sake of freedom. If it is truthful, the special session's report will find that Gina Massa Amini, who sparked this revolution, was brutally killed at the hands of morality police because she was against the compulsory hijab law. It will find that in just one year, over 600 innocent people were killed, 71 of those children. Over 20,000 were arrested, many tortured, many blinded, raped, and so many executed, simply for exercising their fundamental human right of peaceful assembly and freedom of expression. UN Watch has been persistent in exposing the UN's toxic tendency to put the worst human rights offenders on the commissions overseeing human rights. In 2021, the UN made the Islamic Republic of Iran, a regime that ranks 143 out of 140 nations around the world on the, global equal, on the gender equality index as chair, chair of the commission for the status of women. It's a, it's a shame, a real shame. I teamed up with a, a group of Iranian women's rights activists and worked with UN Watch to get Iran ousted from the commission. We were told it couldn't be done, but we persisted. And we did what has never been done before in history. A government, the Islamic Republic of Iran, was kicked off the UN Commission for the Status of Women. Thank you, UN Watch. With the same group of women, we are now focused on the end gender apartheid campaign to try to legally expand the definition of apartheid to not only include race, but gender, so that this will open Iran and Afghanistan to be tried for the crime of apartheid and be subjected to these in international tribunals. You see, UN Watch gives a platform to activists like me to echo and amplify stifled voices under youth, ruthless regimes. And perhaps most importantly, UN Watch gives hope. The oxygen that keeps us breathing, that keeps us fighting for what is right and for what is just. I can tell you that Ahmadinejad's wry smile still haunts me to this day, but I know in the end that we will have the last laugh and the last word, in that the regime of the Islamic Republic of Iran will fall, and the Iranian, will, Iranian people will once again have their country back, a free, democratic, secular Iran with its, its territorial integrity intact. And the world will be a safer place for it. And so for this, Iranians need real support, not military actions, concrete actions that strengthen Iran's people and weakens the regime. So on behalf of freedom-loving Iranian people worldwide, thank you, UN Watch. Zan Zendegi Azadi, 
femme, vie, liberté. Merci. Merci.